Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Dylan and in this one, we're taking a look at a very common type of 11 plus question from nonverbal reasoning. And it is what we call code questions. And you can see an example on the screen right now. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to answer these, what technique works every time. And you're gonna have a go with me as we go through this to make sure by the end, we are complete experts. And then the last question, you're gonna let me know what the answer is. So let's jump straight into this one. What on earth is this question type? Well, let me just start by explaining it. So what we need to do is we are given four different figures or shapes on the left with letters that go alongside each one of them. So this first one here is A, H. And we don't know what that means yet. We have to figure it out because we're gonna have to figure out what code then goes with the fifth shape here on the right hand side. So here's how we do it. Firstly, you separate the letters out. First of all, look at the top letters. So let's take a look at them here. We have A, B, C, and A again. And what this tells us is that A and B and C are all different somehow. But because we have two A's, which we can see here in the first figure and in the fourth figure, we can use this to figure out what it might represent. So what do we see that is exactly the same in the first and fourth shape? Well, the first thing I notice is that they're both squares. But the reason this doesn't work is because B and C are also squares. We need to make sure that the middle two are different somehow. The next thing that jumps out at me is the line underneath each square. Can you see here in the first one, there is a line underneath. So that could be what A is representing. And across here, there's another line underneath. So that would track with it both being A. Let's check the others now. B would be a line at the top, so that does work. And C could be a line on the left-hand side. Yes, that works perfectly because both the A's are the same and the B is different and the C is also different as well. So taking a look at our shape then, over on the right-hand side, there is a line at the top, which matches up with what we see here in the second shape, which means that the letter at the top is going to be B. What we can do at this point, even though we're only halfway through answering the question, we can get rid of any answers that don't have B at the top. So I've actually managed to get rid of B and E. If we're running out of time in the test, we've got a better chance of guessing the correct answer now as there's only three options remaining instead of five. But we're not gonna stop there, we're going to keep going. Now looking at the bottom set of letters, H, J, J, and K. So we're getting used to it now, and our eyes should go straight to the fact that there are two Js. What's the same about the two Js? And you can probably see it straight away, it is what is inside of the square. J means that we have a diagonal line, which means that H is that there's a cross in the middle, and the important one for us is that K means this is a fully shaded in square, which matches R1 here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to put in K, and therefore I've got my answer. It is B, K. So now we know how these questions work and how to solve it. Let's have a go at another one. Feel free to pause the video, have a go yourself, and I'm gonna dive straight in now to actually answering this question. So doing what I did last time, starting at the top, we have A, and A. I see two the same, I'm gonna to jump to them right away. So what do I notice that is exactly the same about these two figures here? Well, it's not the outside shape because we have a black circle and a black square, that's different. Let's look at the inner shape, which is white here. We have a, bit, a white square in the middle and we have another white square in the middle, aha. So I think that's what A represents. It is the middle white shape. So A means that it's a square, B would mean that it's a circle, and C would mean that it's a triangle. That works. So going over to our shape here, we have a white circle in the middle, which matches up with the third shape there, which means the first letter is a B. Do what we did last time, get rid of any answers that do not start with a B. We actually get rid of three here, so we're only down to two already. Let's look at the bottom letters now. F, G, H, and F, aha. I've got an F and I've got an F, awesome. Let's take a look at what this could mean. Does it mean the outer shape? Hmm, let's take a look. Is F the outer black circle? Well, it works for this one and it works for that one, but hold your horses. Let's just make sure. Let's go to H here. Well, H would be an outer black square, but G is also an outer black square. So if it was telling us what's on the outer shape, these two letters would be the same and they're not. They are different, so it has to be something else. Now let's look at the shape right in the middle, the tiny shape. F here could be a circle, a tiny little circle, which means this one, F, 
is also a tiny little circle, so that works now. Let's look at the small shape in the other ones. Uh, we have a tiny square, so H would mean a tiny little square in the middle. And yes, look, here we have a different shape in the middle. It's a triangle. So G represents a small triangle in the center. What do we have over on this side? Well, we have a small circle, which matches up with what we see in the Fs. So we can put an F here as our answer, meaning a small circle in the center. And our answer then is D, which is B, F. Awesome, we're getting the hang now of how to answer these questions. I want to show you this very, very quickly before we crack on, because if you enjoy these videos and you find them useful, you will love our website. Scan the QR code now if you're watching this on the television, or you can go down to the link in the description below, and your children can get so much out of everything we've made. We've done hundreds of lessons, we've made hundreds of worksheets for children to have a look through and have a go themselves, and each individual lesson comes with a full video that we have recorded that you'll only find on our website. You can have a go now for absolutely free, just sign up and you get access to eight lessons immediately, which you can have a go at. And if you like what you see, you can purchase all of them, hundreds and hundreds of brand new lessons just for you to take a look at that you won't find anywhere else. And importantly, homeworks and question walkthroughs for each of them that might help your child as well. If you like these videos, you will love everything we've made on our website. Let's jump back into answering these questions right here. E, F, F, and E. Now, we're getting used to going straight for the top letters, but you'll notice here that there are two different ways we could go about this, and they're both okay. We have F and F, so we could look at what's the same there, but we also have E and E. So, the E's share something in common, and the F's share something in common. Could it be that the E is that there are three lines? No, because there are three lines when it comes to the F as well. Could it be that the E is the direction that we're pointing in? No, because this E points in the bottom right and this E points in the top left. That doesn't work. It is a little bit more hard to spot than what I've described. Have you seen it yet? Well, here's the answer. E is representing the triangle pointing away from the lines, which we can see here. And F is representing the triangle pointing towards the lines, which we can see here. So looking at our shape, it's pointing away. So that means I know it must start with an E, get rid of B and get rid of D. Now let's look at the bottom letters, W, X, W, Y. Okay, well we have W and W, they're the same somehow. And this is the direction of the lines and the way that we're pointing. You can see here W is pointing down towards the bottom right. And so is this W here. Even though the triangle's inverted, we've still got that figure going down towards the bottom right there. F, uh, sorry, X over here on this second one, is seeing these lines going up like this, and why are the lines going up in this direction here? Ours are traveling up to the top right, so it matches with X here. We put EX and we put A as our answer. Boom, we've answered this question. Tricky one there, well done if you managed to get it, but we know how to solve it now, and we can apply it to a new question, much like this one. Remember, as always, pause the video, have a go yourself, because I'm gonna dive straight in now to solving. Let's look at the top then. The first thing we should notice is T and T. Cool, they're the same. What is the same about these two shapes? It is the fact that it is the orientation, almost like a plus sign. So T means a plus sign, U means an upside down Y sign, and S means an X sign here. We have an X sign, so it's going to be S. Get rid of C and get rid of D. Now we go to the bottom, M, N, and N, and O. Well, two N's in the middle. What do these two have the same? It's not position this time, but it is a counting one. We notice N means that there are two dots because this one has two dots also. O is three dots and therefore M is just one dot. Over here we have three dots, so that matches with O and we put SO, which is A as our answer. Look how quickly we can solve these questions when we know what's going on, we know how to approach them, and we've had a look at this video essentially. So I'm hoping you've learned the best technique to answer these questions every time. And do you know why I'm hoping this more than anything? Well, it's for a simple reason actually. I've got a question that I want you to have a go at yourself. What I'd like you to do then, looking at B, C, D, and E at the top, they're all different, hmm. That might be different to what we've looked at so far, but I reckon you can absolutely apply the same logic to figure out something must be not the same there. And looking at the bottom letters, we do have two X's. That should jump out at you. What's the same with those ones? Have a go at this question type, and hopefully, over time, your children can get much better answering these questions, and with a little bit of help, we can improve those scores and get ready to absolutely smash that 11 plus paper. Guys, thank you so much. Leave us a like, share this video, and comment down below what your answer is to this one, and I'll see you next time for another video.